curry. Who doesn't love a curry? Except this one today is for all you vegetarians out there, okay? I've, there's been quite a lot of requests for some vegetarian food, so this is one for you. Uh, it starts off with, with paneer, so actually you can discard this if you want it for vegan as well. So it's a, it's a very mild flavored Indian cheese, very easy to get hold of. I'm just gonna cut it up to fairly big cubes. We're gonna start off by frying it, okay? So we have a bit of turmeric, okay? Little bit of curry powder, we're gonna use those. Gonna dust the cheese with it when it comes out. Got some coconut milk, someone asked what to do with that. Someone asked what to do with some Jalfrezi curry paste. I mean, we're gonna make a curry, standard. Butternut squash, okay, so this is gonna be the big flavor point of it. This is gonna be the kind of the chunks uh, of the main, I suppose, the meat of the curry. Got some chickpeas, got some potatoes, onion, tomatoes, red chili, bit of coriander, lime, and some tomato puree. So, the cheese, gonna start off by frying it. Normally you put it into a much hotter pan. If the pan wasn't hot enough, I've just gone with it, pretending it's all okay. I'm gonna cut the butternut squash in half, save the bottom half for something else, and I'm gonna skin it nice, and thinly slice off that kind of outer skin. So you could do this if you wanted to with a potato peeler. You can hear the cheese going now, beginning to fry. And then I'm gonna cut the butternut squash into the size chunks that I want, okay? About that sort of size, okay? Cheese is frying. Just want a bit of color on it. Just like that, okay? And whilst that cheese is frying, I'm gonna thinly slice an onion. I'm gonna roast the onion in the pan when the cheese comes out. I'm going to use a knob of this ginger. True uh, knob. Okay, when the cheese comes out, coloured up, crispy, crunchy, stick it to one side, and then we're just going to give it a little dusting, just so it absorbs on the oil of curry powder now. The beautiful thing about spices, like curry powder and turmeric, is they really react to warmth, temperature. So the moment that it's hit that warm oil that's on the side of this cheese, the smells are released straight away. Okay, so into that pan that's now frying, these onions, they go in, all right? We're gonna get quite a bit of color on them, all right? A lot of garlic here, I've got one, two, three, put seven cloves of garlic, all right? Chop them up, they're ready to go in next. We do not, do not go in too early because they will burn, all right? And burnt garlic is in the flavor we're looking for. And then this knob of ginger, again, a bit like gouache. Getting that caramelization on these onions is heavy roasting. The natural sweetness that comes with them. And we've got potatoes. Gonna dice them out about the same size as the squash. They can go in with the squash. It's and then at this point, the ginger goes in. The garlic goes in. And sweat that down as well. But that's quite chunky pieces of ginger, all right? And we're gonna give it a big kick now, even more. So this is Madras curry powder. Don't be shy. <coughs> Normally I'd have the extraction on, but the noise is too high and you won't be able to hear me. So in the meantime, I'll just cough. I'm going to put a tomato puree in and hopefully that'll get rid of some of the smoke and the smell because it's really powerful and a splash of water. Cool, that's better. Right, the curry powder has definitely been roasted. The sweated down onions, the garlic and the ginger, all of those flavours have come together really nicely. Now at this point, I'm going to put in the potatoes and the squash. I'm just going to let them start to sweat down a little bit and start to coat, okay? And as they sweat down, they begin to just soften just a little bit. We're going to leave these and don't move them, just leave them still for about five minutes, just as they suck all that moisture out. Okay, so it's been cooking for about five minutes. It's beginning to stick at the bottom, all right? And that's just what you want. And you can see all the veggies are beginning to soften a little bit. And at this point, this is where I'm gonna add this jar. I mean, I hope you like it hot. I love it hot. You can use a mild curry if you want. And then the jar, I'm just gonna add water to it. We'll give it a good shake, all right? And just get all the excess out. And then that's the liquid that goes in, okay? the paste and some excess water and a bit more just so it covers the veggies and then into that we've got three tomatoes here fresh I'm just going to chop into quarters 
stick them in, what will happen is they'll break down and that's more liquid, some of this tomato juice. Chickpeas go in, then a bit of this coconut milk, about half a packet. I'm going to stick it in the oven, 185 degrees for about 45 minutes. Oh, 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 oh yes, look at that, smells amazing. At this point, paneer cheese goes back in. I'm just going to leave it sitting there, just kind of gently warm through. I wasn't going to put two red chillies in it. However, it's quite spicy. Red chillies over the top, coriander, all of it, stalks and all, a good handful. Sprinkle that on the top. A little bit of lime zest just to bring it to life. It smells absolutely incredible. That is my squash and chickpea chow frazi. Guys, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. If you want a book on this though, check out Jack Monroe, okay? Bootstrap Cook, she goes under on Twitter. Honestly, her book is amazing. Loads of ingredients like this. Just get going with it. Cook at home, guys.